My name is Dr. Patty Giebink. I've been a board certified obstetrician gynecologist for over 25 years and I've completed thousands of abortions. Today I'm going to describe induction abortions generally done from 22 weeks to term at 39 weeks. Because the child is so large and developed, an abortion procedure at this point takes two to three days to complete. And due to the risks and the need for monitoring, this procedure is generally done in the hospital or a surgery center. On day one, mifepristone is given orally. Mifepristone blocks the pregnancy hormone progesterone, causing the lining of the uterus to degenerate, starving the fetus of vital nutrients and oxygen. Mifepristone alone doesn't necessarily kill the fetus, so fetal demise is often induced beforehand. This is often only done for babies 20 weeks or older. A syringe with a large needle is filled with a drug called digoxin. Digoxin is used to treat heart problems, but an overdose of digoxin will cause fetal cardiac arrest. A long needle is inserted through the woman's abdomen or vagina, and the digoxin is injected into the fluid surrounding the fetus under ultrasound guidance. The fetus doesn't die immediately, which is why this is normally done one or two days beforehand. For the drug to be more effective, the abortion doctor can also inject the digoxin directly into the fetus, targeting either the body, heart, or umbilical vein. Potassium chloride can also be used to induce fetal demise more immediately. The fetus usually dies within 24 hours of the injection of digoxin. If the fetus doesn't die within 24 hours, the injection can be repeated. Death is normally confirmed by ultrasound before the start of delivery. On day two, 24 to 36 hours after the mifepristone, the woman is given misoprostol either orally or vaginally, causing her to go into labor. The misoprostol dose can be repeated every three hours up to five times. Usually, after 24 hours of starting the misoprostol, the woman will vaginally deliver the fetus. If the woman is having trouble delivering, she may be given a synthetic hormone called Pitocin to promote labor. Once the fetus and the placenta have been delivered and the bleeding is under control, the abortion is complete. Complication rates increase as the fetus grows. The major complication from induced abortion is incomplete abortion in which pieces of the fetus and placenta are left behind. This requires surgical intervention. Other complications include cervical laceration, infection, hemorrhage, uterine rupture, and even death. Future pregnancies are also at a greater risk for loss or premature delivery due to abortion-related trauma, including injury to the cervix. The purpose of an elective abortion is to ensure the delivery of a dead fetus. On the other hand, if a baby is wanted and the mother's health is in danger, the obstetrician induces labor or does a C-section and will have a neonatal specialist present to take care of the baby. As I mentioned at the beginning, I used to perform abortions. At the time, I truly believed I was helping women. Over time, however, I realized that abortion doesn't just end a pregnancy, it ends the life of an innocent, unique human being. As I cared for women in my OBGYN practice, I also learned how abortion harms women. I stopped doing abortions and I became a pro-life advocate. I am proof that anyone can change, no matter who they are or what they have done. I invite you to join me and make a decision to protect the preborn. Thank you for watching.